I sent a message to two friends and they both live overseas but they're Jamaicans who live overseas and I said happy independence one sent back a stern message we are not independent and the other one said after we're not independent ha 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 and laugh you know because the one that laughed knew something that I know we, are, we have a similar consciousness even though we are aware of a lot of things we can see the full spectrum not the negative area or the positively charged area we are seeing the whole spectrum hallelujah and the other person that has said we are not independent no way I mean obviously I, I, I understand and I understand where they are coming from and at one point in my life obviously I would obviously have that stern point of view because we are not full free however to say that they are not freedoms just based upon a religious or a spiritual belief that you are carrying of an ancient freedom is it's just erroneous so I just want to address those two state of mind and see if we can make some sense of our heritage in the modern era so I was good to start with yourself it's a reference point so I identify as Aboriginal Taino now there are many arguments around this because some people don't want to acknowledge their Aboriginals that look like this <laughs> they still want to think Aboriginal look like people who are never here in this part of the world anyway be that as it may there's another segment of society which just squarely see us as descended from people that were formerly hallelujah enslaved and they want to hold that narrative so you have that viewpoint and so that viewpoint transposes a political belief right might be pan-africanism and so that socio-political belief of pan-africanism will lead a lot of pan-africanists to say well there is no true freedom because we follow European laws, Westminster system of politics. Boom! Queen, Commonwealth, done. Right? Alright. As an Aboriginal, I look around and I see, and I'm speaking with brevity here, I look around and I see that maybe for the last 400 to 580 years, we've had this changing state of our affairs as it relates to others called invaders explorers coming into our territory into our um, homeland and telling us many um, stories of their journeys but turning out to be completely opposite to what they're telling us they are not victims they turn out to be villains hallelujah and dispossessed us in breeding our family and took over our blood and lineage rights turned us into non-descendable cattle did many things to us and so because we have seen this and there were prophecies, hallelujah, in the ancient Hebraic tongues of our ancestors here in the Americas that told us of this that would happen. We kind of understood those of us who are awakened that this is our journey and those who have gone through it kind of know that it was going to be a long journey and has acknowledged that it is a long journey because here we are still on that path under the subjugation. So we know what freedom means, but there's a freedom that an Aboriginal acknowledges that has nothing to do with the socio-political, geopolitical view of self that a lot of individuals within the Pan-Africanist movement have that they are connecting their heritage to a land of which, hallelujah, they never were a part of, neither were their ancestors a part of, right? They're not even acknowledging a one global landmass space, they're acknowledging Neolithic statements that are European in nature again, but they claim it as you know their own and use these non discernible terminologies to represent themselves and they're saying people like us who are here Aboriginals are out of sorts with history and they placate a European history and then when you corner them then they have the audacious attitude of saying or the audacity of saying what book did you read hallelujah because it comes down to the books that you read do you understand but they will claim egypt knowledge while subverting the knowledge of ancient egypt and ancient tumeria from the public they play around with the misogyny of the academic treaties to support this kind of a 
bully driven ideology of power to this 20th century and 21st century black man and woman and they don't want to go to our Hebrew heritage as Tainos and have original Caribs across the entire Caribbean and our connection to the other nations in Paleolithic Africa, hallelujah. Our Paleolithic, you know, the motherland, Guandana land, before the Neolithic statements of Scipios Africanos being labeled African. Regardless, they are Aboriginal tribes, Koi Koi, the sun. There are many Aboriginal tribes across the length and breadth of the so called African landmass. But the Aboriginals in the Americas are grouped into um, Monroe Doctrine and so hegemonic powers has reclassified us into new statements and consistently reclassification, reclassification Arawak was the people you now it's the language because what happens is that they take inferences of us and attach it to us because if you refer to me as I am I am still in my sheath of sacred power my seals are still aligned but what you do you take my seals off of me and you transfer them into an inference this is the this uh, let's call let's give you an example this is the mud tribe but i'm actually the tan tribe and the tan comes from tanaka right not to a hue right but to a state of being right to our ancestors to what they believe and over time it's become mythos mythologized but also enshrined in how we represent ourselves but they will come and they say that's the mud people and when they destroy our civilization and destroy our culture and destroy our language the tans generation the tanaka's generation will come up saying we are mud and then there will be ideologies developed amongst the mud people that will say we are Modiakyal and the Modiakyal people are of the ancient and the Modiakyal way of life is this and return to the Modiakyal way of life but the Tan people, the Tanaka push to the fringes of society, the most poorest by economic standards <laughs> are still following traditions and who still retain language is still speaking the tongue and this is the genocide of peoples so when they're talking about there, there is no independence these people are not Tan they are not Tanaka hallelujah they are mud people who are saying these things and my other friend he laughed hallelujah because in all our array tones and attitudes he knows he's a Tan he's a Tanaka and I'm using these as subjective terms don't go research them but you know everything I say has some connection. They say there's a twist to everything. <laughs> but anyway, my friend that is that laugh is a tan, is a Aboriginal, is an original man, and I'm overstand. They would don't know where I go on. I would know some people are vexed because they don't have the power, just like the Sanhedrin, to decide the life of the original Hebrews. Hallelujah. They want to be the head of office, they want to be king, they want to sit in the office of queen and empress and divine patriarch and matriarch to determine the outcome of the people but the office isn't official because the office is not established in the ancient it's been established in a concept they have of themselves and if you tell them that then they're angry because they're enshrined in it hallelujah and they're entrenched in it and to give it up means to admit what is present in the tan the original the aboriginal is ancient and it has been long suffering, hallelujah, as the words say. You can't reinvent the faith. We have attitudes here. We do things, I and I, as a Taino, through the way of the Nazarite, the Essene. So that's hallelujah. That's our ancient way. And even though we're in the modern and we might dress this way, it is a content of character that knows it's you'd have of hey. Yeah. And even, and even if we have a little discrepancy of how we present, we present the word of Olam, right? We still know, right, through Yeshua Mashiach, Yeshua, Yahuwah, 
Yahushua, whatever the terminology, the tongue that is placating your behavior. We know our heritage. But to claim this, you have to declare that you are in exile in your own homeland. But you're singing and praising and chanting to the Most High. And show you love your people and it's still you through all these stages. Guess what you know? That this midway of freedom, hallelujah, is on the way to full free. And these mid-guardians that are trying to change the Asgardian way, hallelujah, will not have power. No matter how much titles they have. Right? Because this is the Aboriginal way, which is ancient, and we cannot create it. We have to adhere to it. Hallelujah. It's the first moral code that is enshrined in behavior. Long before it was recorded and now becoming decoded and triangulated and decoded as a genome. And behavioral sciences and ethics and all of the likes. So that original behavior, it doesn't have a religious title as though they think it does. It doesn't have a theocratic title. Because those who worship, hallelujah, Worship in spirit and in truth. So they ask you, where's the throne of God on earth? Hallelujah. It's not an earthly kingdom. That, that way. Hallelujah. However, again, heritage amongst these different points of view, the actuality of our descendability from our ancestry, Abraham, Gideon, we understand, we overstand, honor thy mother and thy father. Don't reinvent, hallelujah, the wheel. And don't postulate a new song. Yeah, we have to sing the Lord's song in our own land. Because we're in our own land, hallelujah. We have to. So as we grow to see the fullness of our freedom, the Aboriginals know it's just another stage. Yeah. But we don't want you to put us into modern Ethiopianism ancient Ethiopianism, hallelujah, or Pan-Africanism. Because the Aboriginal way of life of the Taino man and woman in Jamaica has been the same. When you study behavioral science and look at the deportment of the human bio rhythms and biorhythm transpose as behavioral in terms of how a person moves their hand when they're gesticulating or you stand or you speak or you address in an in a assertive way. So all this study, the most ancient reels that you can study of Jamaicans and the modern reels, it's the same person. You can just like that. And it's the same movement. Yeah? You can, I was going to say superimpose, but I didn't want to use that word. You can literally put them in harmonization with each other. And they are a perfect match in perfect symmetry. Because it's, it behavioral, we are the same people. Hold on right there. Transpose that behavioral ethics to the attitudes expounded in the Bible, in the ancient texts about the attitudes of the ancient tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. The ancient Hebrew nations, right? The behavior, the attitudes, how we relate, how we speak, how we intonate. Our language is Hebraic. Even to the point of we referring to points of creation in the nomenclature or the etymon in relation to a creator, not a false deity. We say Aya, I, first person, Ya, creator, Aya. Aya is in reference to I and I, the, the first person, I speaking to you, and in relation and presence also. Of Yah, the I am, hallelujah, which is the eternal presence manifest in a form as I, Aya, over Yah, as in over here, here in presence of Yah, here in presence of God. That is etymology in etiman as it relates to our nomenclature, the way we speak as a linguistic anthropological reference to us being Hebrew and Hebraic hallelujah and so we have many more 
we actually have the archaeological, the many pyramids, the many kind of functioning drums we beat, the many kind of beats, like in the Severtim, the Torah, and the, um, the Tekia Godala, which is a very, very long note. And the Severtim, which is a set of three short notes, and the Torah, which is a mid-range long note. These are being blown on the shofar. They are being beaten on drum patterns. We have the round drum, still as the tambour, which is the ancient Hebrew drum. We've got the square drum. We've got all these traditions, which are archaeological, archaeological, anthropological evidence of a Hebrew heritage that is not codified under a nation state. Like, oh, this is Ethiopia, this is South Africa, this is Kenya. And all these nation states got their name as a reference point to the actual ancient civilization that is there. Something is interfered with the ancient civilization because, you know, within the Ethiopian, you have the Aksumite, but before that, you had many other civilizations that came up. You can go further back. We can hear that, well, the Ethiopians are the Abyssinians, they are the o o early Sudanese, and the, the, old, the early Yemenis, to Somaliland, to Eritrea. And so you realize to Kenya, the children of the Amaru, right? And you realize that there is um, haplogroup group um, biological um, genetic connection to some of the Igbos in South Africa and all of the Hebraic nations wherever we find ourselves, hallelujah. Across the world, we are family, hallelujah. And so the heritage which goes beyond the nation state has to go first, has to be the true point of view. And because we realize that geopolitically, the state's ideology started coming in, and we started realizing that, you know, from, from, a, from, a, from an ancient point of view, we were under vassal states, so we call them commonwealths. So I'm just shattering all these things, right? So I know they call it commonwealths, hallelujah. But back in the ancient times, we already knew that we, they were called vassal states. So we knew that Moorish law came in at a certain point and was basically running our Islamic law, hallelujah, Sharia law. Sharia law is, 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 a, is a point along the spectrum, but it's called uh, Eastern. But the behavior in Sharia exists also, hallelujah, in the Americas. I'm not talking extreme Sharia. What I'm trying to say is that this Islamic code, this Muslim code, has run the Americas for a long time before the Europeans came with their Christian codes and calling a shuttle and three-fifths human and slaves. Hallelujah. Right? Before Dom de Vassiers and the papal bulls, right? Yeah, before Kesheve, you know, some, Kes, some say Keskevi, right? You know, Shekove, which is taking all our rights, right, from us. There were vast states that were ruling from Morocco from Tunisia, from Mali, hallelujah. And also in the European times, I mean from Carthage to from Rome, right? From Thessalonica, from Andalusia, right? And you know, now to America in hegemony. And you know the different structure of the four um, three major world power in ethnicity now. All of that triangulation started out a while back and we knew we were there observing hallelujah all of it and they, they, they related us not to cosmology but cosmogony and they related us to customs and primitive practices which are really primal and first and they took mathematics and science history biology heritage culture neutral culture everything there's so much I can't say all of them they took it from us and said it was so-called civilized men that developed that. And it wasn't a natural behavioral ethic that came up natural in the Aboriginal world. And so you have these middle way, mid-guardians, who are robbing us guardian rights, hallelujah. And they're stealing our place and trying to be just like the Sanhedrin, yeah, gods over us, hallelujah. They want worship like the Bule and praise. But we've got to be very careful of them as, and don't let them determine heritage and culture for us and whether or not we are independent or not because really and truly we are on the stage towards fully free and if you're telling our ancestors that um, 
could not even have back a piece of their own property that their, that their ancestors lost, right? That they could not even walk around, you know, at certain points in their lives, you know, without being stopped by everybody else and being questioned to show identity papers, right? You're going to tell our ancestors that were shuttled, yeah, that were killed before they were shuttled, that were murdered to protect their families, isn't it? You're going to tell those who survived past that, that where we are now, we are not in a more free state than we were when we were so heavily um, dispossessed. You can use your mind to return to your Aboriginal way, to the Hebrew heritage. You can come out of your postmodernist philosophies that needing to prove yourself worthy to people who already have proven themselves not worthy that anyone should show themselves equal with. And so when you're playing to these you know, illusions, you are no better, hallelujah. And when you deny the Amashiach, hallelujah, also you cause uh, this harmonization within our people and within our culture. And you skew the reality and you pretend like the Amashiach weren't speaking, hallelujah, hallelujah, like I am, right? That he spoke about how we were in our kindred tribe and tongue and some would say he spoke about the days of Noah and the days before right and the days of Abraham so why would he speak about those because most times if you know history um, Abraham is coming out of Suma right Abraham in, mixed with a little bit of the whole um, uh, Hindu heritage right Brahma or Brahmin an enlightened being right it's coming out of Suma right so what Yeshua was referring to was that he knew before we settled down, yes Lord, I'm, I'm going to be obedient. Before we settled down and said nation state, right? He knew also that we were nomadic, right? Traveling along the tribal way, right? Just some distractions in the spirit and physically manifesting, right? Yeah. Because from Abraham, Gideon, from Adam, from Adam's generation, from Adam's skin, from Adam and Eve's generation, right? We weren't a nation. We were a people. We were of the kingdom of the living God. We are beings of spiritual aura transposed into human life. So the human development of any kind of culture, we have always termed to be infused by fallen angels. So the human culture and, and, and its providence and its theosophonies and such and theocracies were never something that we were, we were ever really honoring because we worship the true and living, hallelujah, God. So Yahshua reminding us of the heritage from Adam and Eve from Adam, Kadmon and Nikibu, Kadmon. A heritage that was without nations, walls, borders or frontiers. And so we were this before we became these states in Sumer. So Abraham's generation, generation of Moses, were the nation of the Hebrew nation, you know, someone said the Israel nation, the nation of Israel, right? Did you see that <laughs> pitching right there? Yes, the nation of, of, of Israel, some would say. And they were nomadic, you know, being enslaved here, being subjugated in their own lands, seeking refuge here, moving here, always up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? I know you have this modern Zionist state, which is purporting to be a Hebrew nation. Right, but we all know what we know and we understand that. But what I'm saying is that when you go back to the Amashiach way, to the ancient way, you don't use these nation states and these kingdoms to substantiate your place on earth, hallelujah, and to substantiate your heritage. But you do know that there was a time where you roamed free amongst the plants of nature. Even when you came out into the harbor lands and you learned agriculture and you farm and you cared for nature, you cared for the plants, you couldn't go in the forest to cut a tree without consulting with, with the Most High God and the angels and when you lose such, you call it the Great Spirit, hallelujah but you knew that you were supposed to go there and pray to acknowledge before you could um, kosher or halal, what we call it now, slaughter an animal that, that time you didn't need to call it that because you already had honor right, but that honorable lifestyle right, the true primal being now called primitive, hallelujah now become dissected as you're losing gnosis, losing knowledge of self you now call certain behaviors virtue and you call them rites and you call them rituals 
because they are far removed from your natural way of life which they were when you were aboriginal natural the closer you are to god so in spirituality you know, we call it going closer to god but most don't want to tell you when you say go closer to god it means you're going back closer to your natural state but people make you what we call it you now triangulate it into religious belief right just like they're telling you these pan-africanist views and oh we're not this and we're not that you understand know because what they're talking about is an ideology that they have they don't really care about hallelujah true freedom uh, they are wealthy people and want more wealth hallelujah or is looking to be as wealthy bully right so the essence of it is when you see the people going through when you see the brethren and the sister you know living on nature cutting down the trees and building their home you know you tell them reserve chill how dare you you have no license to right so you see what's happening aboriginal people who are losing all right hallelujah of life right you get it hope you get what i'm saying you know you go out in the bush they say you're on this land in jamaica they say water commission yes father i love the way you're instructing me to just stay on point we're not going to use no ideology where people wonder here in jamaica where i'm at they call it water commission land which means crown lands hallelujah meaning what belong to the british monarchy and to members of the british family hallelujah who call themselves royals right our land they're, they're not born here never were not from our ethnicity the, the, the soil did not create them by the law of nature and the law of the land they have no right but they're under admiralty law law of the seas and when you lose your birthright and become drowned at sea you need representation in the sanhedrin these pan-africanists which is trading ideology they are like economic partnership agreements in trade ideology yeah like south north trading not north south exploitation right our south south trading that's what they are you need to learn these terminologies right so that's who they are they're not aboriginal they're not original they do not care about me well live a bush yes i'm a live a bush so don't play no games with me i'm not driving no c-class and i'm not that i'm unambitious i'm telling you the reality of the principles when you hold them and i'm not talking about perfection i'm talking about principles when you hold them and you want to live by them right no one listens when you talk like this you think the, the western church in its catholic catholic view or its protestant view is going to agree with everything i'm saying look at me good people listen to me carefully they're not you think these pan-africanists are going to think again so i'm just saying 60 years of interdependence amongst ourselves and a more independent mindset and a more open and inclusive state hallelujah but we know that we started before nation states so we're giving thanks we're on the journey to returning to a state of awareness that does not placate us in borders boundaries and frontiers okay so i give thanks for my people who have their strong point of views like who oh, we're not this but i i examine you and i know you examine me because i ain't rich you're gonna just crush me who are you here got nothing exactly but i got the most i and don't think that means that i'm saying i'm without worth you know because i know worth means material position it gives you status to give you titles to give you labels uh -uh -uh. i'm not playing no postmodernist game either like oh swami sai baba i am empty within myself no i'm telling you i'm not a materialist hallelujah but i i still do stuff to earn money but I do stuff as a business and I do stuff as a ministry. So you have the little money earning stuff. And you know what I said earning? Some people say, hey, you're not that way. Can you use the word earn just like them? Yeah, I use it too because guess what? We are in the world, but I'm not of the world. So I also have ministry business. I have my own work that I do in therapy. And I have my own products and my own service and my own, hallelujah, creativity, my own music. Yeah. And the stuff that I earn to do, that I do to earn money now, are those that relates back to people yeah that are a part of how they examine and understand reality so i don't play no games with myself because I, I don't live in outer space people right so i am employable hallelujah <laughs> but it's contracts right and so the lord is saying give them an, an, an idea of earning so they don't get crazy okay so every four years or so we are five years according to the constitution we're supposed to have elections right? i'm on election day supervisor trained by the government as an election day specialist but i've worked for 20 25 years as um, a election day supervisor yeah it's a contractual i'm not doing it all the time holidays so i earn money doing that right okay so that out of the way all obscurity is cleared up right okay 
So, as I'm original again, I and I know I am here and I am representing I people and I'm looking at all these different things and I'm keeping up with the, the new etiman and nomenclatures in language as they now got these books on sustainable development, meaning they're going to come and take your land and push you and more and more um, reservation and they're going to come back 50 years and take the reservation when they discover oil or the, the new cobalt or the new uranium or plutonium or plutonium is the one that is enriched okay whatever but you get what i'm saying right when they have done this over and over you know the lord says when christ come you know to destroy the way of the man of lawlessness so it all has to come to a point to a buckle neck to explode hallelujah is it, is, it, is it a way of seeing it i think it's the way it's written so we are going to go through all these trials and tribulations these tests and all these little people thinking that they can represent us because we already have a representer hallelujah we have a savior and some people are gonna want to run come in before the door closed but sometimes it's gonna be closed hallelujah and we're going here hallelujah too late yeah because when when the real power is returning to the true royalty that means that the europeans who robbed us knew who the royal bloodlines are and many people are pretending that they belong to somewhere else they know who the true royal bloodlines are because they kept records right and when the, 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 the lawsuits are going to be won and all of the Dom de Vassiers and the Cheshavi and the Keshave, Shekwave and the Keshavi, when all these are overturned and we return to descendability, it's only the heirs that maintain culture and rights will get their property. Not those who go to register as an Aboriginal. It's okay to register Aboriginal rights. <laughs> but, but when the law is truly ratified, and we're gonna to return to our descendability. You're gonna see what's going on. And many of those, you're gonna realize that their true bloodline is all European royalty. Yes, they share the skin tone, and the true bloodline is all European. Moodish royalty are, remember the Jeremiah told of the kingdom's flight? Yes, they are of the old kingdom. Um, Muslims and, 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 and ancient Hebrews, all right? Who are mixed into the Khazarian families too. Go and look at their skin tones, right? Believe me. So you're gonna see that they're not of Noah, Abraham, they are not of the honored traditions. I mean ultimately, you know, they are of the family. But you know we go. I Lord say, show it the, the, the traditional Christian way. Okay. They're not of Abel are not of the line that you would say of you you had um set and you add Cain, right so they're not of the line of set then right right because they killed abel right so that line was they had the line of Cain, and you have the line of seth so those two lines are the ancient lines and you have a point where the line of Cain descended from the line of of, of adam where it broke out from the line of its family and you know, during the time of Tubal Cain developed a philosophy that was unto the seed of the serpent. Well, that's what we now call it because that's what we now know it as that they are called the serpent seed. So, as I said, it is so them come jumping, Belzebub. I know this him show up himself earlier, but anyway, I didn't know I was going to be hitting so much corn on this video, but I don't want to make it too long because it's already going. But what I'm saying is that our ancient heritage can be truly represented in our understanding. And when these systems fall and true kingdom comes, right, the everlasting kingdom, you're going to see who is thrown off into the lake of fire, who becomes the, the stray god and the beggar, right? You're going to know who was a servant upon the earth, sorry, who was a servant upon the horses pretending to be nobility. You're going to realize who was the noble upon the earth cleaning stables and the latrines of this world and the gutters, right? You're going to see the true earth and the true paradise return. And this is a generational blessings that we owe to our children. And that is why we are on the path. Because we know each age represents something else and something else and something else. And we are, hallelujah, observing and carrying the prophecies forward. Unto generations, unto generations. Until everything shall come forth. Because the scepter shall not depart from Judah and our lawgiver from under his feet until the day of Shiloh. Blessings to you, Dave, of Yeshua Mashiach our true God and King, Lord and Savior, hallelujah, conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda, Baru Sababa, Korin Shababa. Blessings 
joy, love, prosperity. Continue to like, subscribe, and share the Chill Life experience right here on Chill Life Television Network. And on Sealer Media, love the vibration. Continue to support the wizio.com slash mini therapy healing session. Continue to come forward and support the therapy, yeah? Over the phone, online, you know what I mean? In person, we give thanks to the Most High God. Love, light, and listen to the ancestors, to those who have survived the travails, to be here as us with us in the spirit of Aya. Aya.